Rub up your engines! Well, if you saw in the past, they make these cars called Hongguang Mini EVs. They're mini EVs, and they go at a lower price, and they're outselling the Teslas. It turns out they only make $14 for each one that they make, and no wonder they sell them so cheap. Now, they say in 2021, the way their sales are going, they're going to sell more than 400,000 of them, but they're only making 14 bucks a piece. So, you might think, why are they making these things to make only $14 a piece? Well, because there's more than meets the eye. They're electric vehicles, right? So they get carbon credits. And each Mini that they sell has a carbon credit of two carbon credits. And in China, each carbon credit is worth $464. They're almost making a thousand bucks because they get two of those. If they sell 460 thousand of them this year that's times a thousand dollars that's a lot more profit than fourteen dollars per car <laughs> and that's one of the reasons they're making them. the other reason of course is status they want to be the highest selling electric car in the world which they will be they want to get the name out there which they will be if you look at toyota when they first came to the united states they sold little bitty pickup trucks they didn't make much money on them now they're expensive they got brand loyalty they got people to buy them drive them like them not a bad move don't make a big profit in the beginning but you get brand loyalty where tesla's doing the exact opposite charge as much as you possibly can for these things thinking that oh they're electric cars and people have money they're rich they don't care they want to get a new thing electric car right now the chinese are going the opposite way make it small cheap ones selling them cheap and getting brand loyalty as i said watch out for the chinese when it comes to electric cars there's massive volumes of them as the asians often work they think long term how do you think the japanese make such good cars and sell them over the world they think long term they think oh how can we get people to buy them americans are like how much money can we make right now right now right now <laughs> well here's an interesting one mazda is recalling 261,000 of their cars because of the plastic emblem in a steering wheel you know they got the little mazda emblem well it turns out instead of making it out of the soft stuff they made it out of a hard plastic so if the airbags blow because the age and the water intruding on them they're kind of cracky they split into pieces and they can rip your face open <laughs> Now, didn't they think about, you got an airbag, right? It's a safety thing that's going to blow up in your face. Why would you put anything on top of it that could break up and rip you to pieces? You'd think you'd want to use the softest material possible and not put a stupid emblem when you have an airbag right in front, you know? <laughs> I guess they deserve to have to recall them for plain stupidity. So it turns out they're using polyurethane and modern ones, they use polyester, like polyester pants, you know? They're flexible, they don't have problems, but they use too hard of a plastic material that it has injured people. They've blown up and ripped their faces and stuff. Now, what kind of an idiot would design a safety device that's supposed to hit people with anything on it other than the softest material possible? Like I say, they should get an award for stupidity on that one, but now they got to replace 261,000 of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have engineers in these companies that even study this stuff? Or is it just helter skelter? Oh, you know, let's put rocks on these things. It looks good, yeah. <laughs> So what if it's going to hit people in the head? It really makes you wonder. It really does. Dev Mitch says, shock extenders, are they good or bad? I'm putting new OEM shocks in my 04 Dodge Dakota. I'm looking for an easy way to get one or two inches out of it. Well, you're not raising it much. It's not affecting it too badly. You better make sure you buy really good shock extenders because the weight of your vehicle's on them. And I've had customers in the past buy cheaper ones. A lot of them were made in China. Put them on the end of the shocks to raise them up a little higher. And they snapped off when they hit big bumps you better make sure you got really quality hardened steel find out what grade of steel is used you want the same grade of steel that's used in lug nuts that hold your wheels on to your car you don't want cheap ones and realize of course by doing that you're straining the shock more by putting more pressure push on it's going to wear your shocks out faster too but it is a cheap way to raise them a little bit just make sure you get quality ones because if they snap off when you go down the road and that shock hits the wheel puncture the tire you could be killed if you're going at 60 70 miles an hour and the shock breaks off and hits the tire you want to make sure you're getting quality ones big dog says my daughter's buying her first car i need advice my daughter's looking for a vehicle her first car she found an 03 toyota matrix with 287,000 miles the dealership put a new engine block in at 202,000. later they replaced the transmission with a newer used one it passed smog recently i drove it it runs smooth for its age it's not the prettiest but eh, i told my daughter your first car is kind of a pos anyways the guy 
guy wants three grand. I told her we should ask less. What do you think? Okay, well, they're well-made vehicles. If there's actual proof that that stuff was done, the transmission, the engine, and it shifts, it runs okay. It does have almost 300,000 miles. Okay, the guy wants 3K. Offer him two and see where it goes. Realize the Matrix are basically Toyota Corollas. They can run a really long time, but it's an old car. You're not getting any guarantee. They can run a really long time. If you drove it and it shifts good and it runs good and doesn't smoke, the engine's not burning oil, it could be good for quite some time. And really these days, you don't get much for two or three grand in a used car. See how low you can get them to go. And if they do, you're not going to get that many people buying on a 300,000 mile car for $3,000. Even today, that's a lot of miles. You're not getting any guarantees, but they are excellent built cars. And if it's proven that the engine was replaced and uh, the transmission was replaced with the lower mileage one, eh, you know, if it shifts good, eh. Why not buy it? Well, if you saw that video where I bought a new car and I got that Honda N600, the two-cylinder motorcycle engine and the first Hondas they sold in the United States before they sold Civics here, it turns out that a guy by the name of Tresselix restored one back in 1993. He says, I restored one back in 93. I've been before and after pictures. I bought the last gas tank master cylinder carburetor that Honda had to sell at the time. Okay, well, that's interesting. He has pictures. It's really cool looking. That was back in 1993 you bought the last one right that was what 28 years ago <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to restore one now. I'm going to have good luck getting parts. I know that. It's going to be a scream trying to get parts. The engine on the one I bought is locked up. So the first thing I want to do is take the engine apart and see if I can get parts for it. Because if I can't get parts for it, the whole thing is just, you know, a waste of time. And I would just sell it on if somebody else wanted to try to restore one. Because it wouldn't be worth the bother. But I'm sure somewhere I'll be able to get parts. And if Honda's listening to this, heck, if you want to sell me a full rebuild kit for your 1970 N. 600 engine feel free to send me one you know i'd love to get the factory parts and rebuild it correctly so the thing would run good you know and send me a timing chain kit too <laughs> And Chuffman says, should I get a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic? I'm starting a new job in California, and I don't want to spend the gas money for my 2013 Tundra Crew Max. I don't blame you. Those get pretty bad gas mileage. I'm looking for a smaller car. Should I get a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic? I want to spend seven to 800 bucks on a car. All right, well, you pick the best two to buy. The problem is, you're in California. You want to spend seven to 800 bucks. You can get an old one with a ton of mileage. Check them out if you can find one. Yeah, great, you know, but for my idea what I know of California you're gonna have a hard time finding one in that price range but if you can and they both run good it doesn't matter which one you buy they're both well made you want to road test them to make sure the transmissions aren't if the transmissions are slipping don't even think about buying them it costs a fortune on a Corolla and the Civic to do a tranny over three four grand minimum they're very complex front wheel drive transmissions but if they still shift good what the heck it doesn't matter which one those are both really well built you don't want to put mileage on your Tundra because it's a gas hog I don't blame you just realize you're not gonna get much for seven or eight hundred bucks these days in California unless you get really lucky and Meklikov says is magic scratch repair paint real or a gimmick I got a bunch of scratches from branches falling on I wonder if this magic scratch repair paint is legitimate sounds too good to be true well most things that sound too good to be true aren't true I have these ads you know oh yeah fixes this and that you got tiny scratches any kind of repair kit can work what you're basically basically doing is you're either getting really fine sandpaper or you're getting different types of polish. Generally there's a coarse, medium, and a fine. And if it's really bad, you start with the coarse, then use the medium, then use the fine, and then paint over it, right? It can be done for minor scratches. Deep scratches, forget it. You got to repaint the car. And of course, the problem is when you have scratch repair paint, your car was spray painted when it was made. Very even layers of thin paint and then clear coat paint. That's sprayed on. You know, Formally. You get out there and you start dabbing little bits of paint. It never looks perfect. I've tried. Now it's looked like a woman with crappy fingernail polish that they've touched up that looks really sleazy. And your car's probably going to look like that. It's very hard to touch it up. The only real touch up in that you can get on decent scratches is a pro who knows how to feather it or somebody who's really good at airbrushing. You got one of those little airbrush paint kits, you know, that airbrush and stuff. Some of those things work quite well, if done correctly, but you got to be a real pro to airbrush. I tried it on stuff, and I'm, I admit, I'm no good at it. You got to be a pro to do that kind of stuff. It's pretty hard to do. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.